So the inception of this hafted thrusting sphere has uh, caused a, a, a wave of violence to be visited upon the Cro-Magnon populace. Uh, first, Wolf Corbett, who, as you can see here, is um, quite the dangerous individual. Um, this uh, went to the Neanderthal home node there and, and took out uh, one of USR locals' cubes. And then, because uh, he, of course, uh, to explain, he used the spear. Um, and then Jonathan, I've been calling him John because he's John Cleese, but he's actually Jonathan. Um, Jonathan did the same and took the Arak cow space. So now uh, Crow Magnon is down here the peninsula. What I had done is something of, what we had done is something of a defensive move became, um, caused a whole lot of violence. Of course, no one has attacked us because we are, you know, we are equal, equal martially, so it would be, it would be like a, a kamikaze mission to do so. Um, I see, you know, we could have, uh, we could have pressed the advantage when we had it. Now we're tied up and the people who have uh, metal, who have copper, as you can see on the map, all have three spaces. And the, sorry, my arm is shaky because I was just using a weed eater, and so I'm having this kind of like weird aftershock from all that. Um, the people who do not, which is USR Local and John over there, are just in one space. So it's our turn now. We're going to return to this. Oh, here's a truck. Um, this, this, uh, discard pile of the the Peking man and ransack these uh, the courtship here everyone involved really likes the idea of courtship and it also kind of clears the way for um, other people to get that spear if they if they so desire and then we're gonna go ahead and do that courtship uh, for the fecundity decrease we were kind of torn um, Another thing we would have liked to do is clear off uh, our Broca's area in order to then start naturalizing. Being able to naturalize, you need language to naturalize, or uh, a domesticate, sorry, um, to domesticate animals so you can speak to the animals. Um, but we feel like the fecundity decrease is more important right now because we are getting close to the edge of chaos and it would also give us another innovation action. So. You know, it's gonna it's not gonna do a lot in the short term, but in the long term, hopefully it'll help us. Hopefully also we don't go into chaos this turn. I'm gonna go do that roll online right now. And once again we avoided chaos. That's good, because next turn we should be able to make it so that we're stable enough that we don't even have to deal with it. Um as so long as there's a fecundity decrease in one of the discard piles, which chances are there will be. They're fairly common in this and all the eras. It's it's kind of one of the bread and butter icons of the game. Um, so we are also not gonna do any population actions. Our choices are to we could kind of situate ourselves and um, maybe give potentially give up some territory. Um, we could do some kamikaze attacks. Um, we could also, and we could do a, a kamikaze attack followed by a Sabine raid if we wanted to. Um, but we kind of like where we are. Uh, we we would maybe want to move if we were going to grow our population, but we're trying to stabilize now. We had that kind of jump ahead, and now we'd like to keep stable because, it, which is also um, partially because if there is chaos. Some of these people aren't going to be able to play for a little bit. Uh, I haven't decided whether they'll be out of the game entirely, but I'm kind of leaning towards keeping the same characters. So if there is chaos, um, you know, half the people are going to have to leave the map, which is one in this case, but no one wants to be that one. Um, so they're going to try to stabilize back down. And so that's, that's my turn. Um, since I don't really have anything else to talk about game-wise, I thought I'd tell you a little story um, that that kind of relates to the game. Over the weekend I went on a rather lar long bike ride, what was for me a long bike ride, to my in-law's house um, in order to attend a barbecue. And along the way I had some adventures that relate to the game. First I stopped at this sculpture park that's along the trail, which is a um, pretty nice place to go. Uh, I'd recommend it if you're ever near Tenino. Um and I've been there before. Every time, I, every time I go on this trail, I tend to stop at that park because it's around the time I need a break. And it's a, it's a nice 
park and there's some sculptures. It's some someone owns it and they just have some sculptures in their their kind of acreage, I guess. Um, and I found a sculpture that I hadn't seen before, and that was a sculpture of a giraffe. In the there's this um, kind of butterfly butterfly maze, monarch maze, I think it's called. And it's like a hedge maze, but in the center there's some like um, statues. And there's statues throughout. And then one of the corners tucked away that I hadn't seen before is a statue of a giraffe. That was the first character I ran across. Um, I gave it a nice big long hug. Uh, it was good to good to see her there. Um, and then, okay, and then I biked for a while and I was in Tanaino. Um, I think I didn't I didn't know at the time if it was Tanaino or not. But the trail this was this was trail I hadn't been on yet. I came off the trail. And there on a garage door was uh, in silhouette two Pegasi. So there I saw Pegasus. And that was my second stop actually ended up being in Tonino. I went to this really bad um, eatery, kind of cafe eatery. Would not recommend it. Had a had something with it, 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 that had like cold American cheese on it. Was the thing I ate. I don't really want to go into that. But I needed the food. It gave me the go I needed to continue on my journey. Um, I went uh, past Tanaino, there was um, a stretch where it was on highway. The people there, the culture of the place, and here's where I was kind of, was thinking a lot about culture at this time. The culture of the place is not one that's really seemed to be accepting of bicycles. Um, that was kind of the, the prejudice I had. I, I, you know, it's, it was a, it's like a rural kind of truck place. Um, very very conservative usually you know, I think always always votes Republican all the all the people running for office there seem to be Republican all the lot yard signs and you know not that Republicans don't bicycle but there's a certain um, there's a there's a certain culture that tends to vote Republican that uh, is really more into trucks and I think feels it takes it as an affront when someone um, uses a different sort of transportation. Our, the way we transport ourselves is, is one of the more um, intimate way, intimate like objects that we, uh, that we um, interface with. Uh, I think people oftentimes identify with their automobiles, they give it a name. I have a name for my bicycle, incidentally, it's called She Flute of the Heavy Moon. Um, and you know, like if people get in a car accident, for example, they won't say that uh, someone hit their car, they'll oftentimes say, that someone hit me, or that person almost hit me, when really it's their car they're hitting. Um, but that, you know, when you're in a car, you sort of become one with that car. And so I think that's very personal to people, and since there's a, a limited resource in terms of the, you know, road space or, and whatnot, people will oftentimes take it as an affront if someone's using one kind of transportation over another. So, um, for example, when I lived in Tennessee for a time, and people I would I would walk everywhere, and people didn't seem to like that there. In the certain not, and when I say people, it's not everyone, of course, but there are, there's uh, an increased incidence of people hollering or throwing things at you in different locations. So here, anyway, um, it was really frightening because I was on these windy roads, and there was there was really nowhere for me to ride except in the road, and it was like 55 miles per hour, um, and I, you know, I. I wouldn't put it past certain individuals, because if someone doesn't belong to your culture, they're somewhat of an invader, and so they're less human to you, um, to, to hit me. Um, and at one point, a red truck went right by me, like almost hit me, and was like trying to scare me. I don't think he was actually trying to hit me. Um, anyway, so that was, that was a scary part of the ride. I ended up walking most of it, because, you know, it was kind of... Um, so then I got to Centralia and I went to this thrift shop that I like called Visiting Nurses and I was like, okay, I had the um, I had the giraffe stop and the Pegasus stop and the whole time I, I was in Visiting Nurses I was like, I gotta find something cat as in cat I gotta find something cat related or there's something um, something baby related that I that I'm gonna find here that's gonna be the next part of my journey you know the kind of uh, these these different individuals who I'm working with. Um, and I didn't find anything. There was like nothing there. Um, no games there really uh, that were interesting. No books that were interesting. There was nothing there. I didn't look at the clothes. Um, I even looked at little statues. I was thinking I could, would find like a porcelain statue that might 
fit with the cat thing. Then on my way out, they had this little um, rack of free magazines. And in that rack, there was one book, and the book was, um, I forget what it's even called, but it was about being a father. And it had the father holding up the, the kid. And I was like, that's the cat object. That's the cat thing. So I took that book. I don't know if it's any good. I haven't read it. But um, it's, it. of course, you know, another thing I was, I, you th when you're on a bike ride or on a long trip by yourself, you can do a lot of thinking. And so one of the things I was thinking of was obviously fatherhood and being a good father because that's something I worry about or not worry, but I concern myself with. Um, and anyway, so that was the that was the cat portion, and so I was like, I'm gonna find the little red part when I get there, um, which would be my final stop. Um, but then when I got to the the barbecue, there's nothing really red here. Um, I realized it was the truck that was the kind of little red um, portion. So you know, I could spend some time. Um, telling you like kind of what what sort of thoughts this kind of journey elicits and the the different um how the different the different synchronicities whether they're just come from my mind or from the world uh maybe string things together or what lessons they have to teach me but i'm i think i'm still figuring that out uh as either um a way of learning from the world or learning from my own thoughts and using this as an external uh, method to kind of um hone in my thought process. But anyway, it did relate to the game, so I thought I'd relate that to you, and you can you know, look into that journey yourself if you like, or you can just wait for next time. Pablo Origins, I'm really enjoying this game. It's it's exciting to play this against people who are um, seem to really have a grasp on what they're doing. Like, I, I maybe have told you this before, every time I play this with other humans, it's I'm teaching, and they're just kind of experiencing the game for the first time. So it's, and I love that, but it's very different than being on a, on a, a, a even footing in terms of grasp of rules. 